Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net. And welcome back to part three of the Meteor Tutorial Series. And uh, it's been a while, but uh, just been busy working on a top secret project. Can't actually talk about it, but it's a pretty big deal. Um, let's just say it has something to do with POGs and bringing them back to the U.S. Now, if you're not familiar with POGs, I recommend you look it up. Um, there are these basically cardboard graphic cards that you use to, well, just read up on it. The rules are pretty straightforward. Each player contributes equal number of pogs. Um, oftentimes there's a special juke and it's used by the defender to prevent the slammer from overturning more pogs. So a juke is like screaming or taunting, waving your hands, all that stuff. So oftentimes a player that missteps um, is then followed by the other player saying, you just got juked. So, in any case, um, what we're going to be doing is compositing this uh, final shot off here in After Effects. So, we've rendered out our 3D animation of our hole. We have our Buju tracking data. And of course, you can search for 3D tracking software. There's a number of different ones out there that will get you going. But uh, here's the idea of what we're going to be finishing off. So looks pretty good and it goes on a little bit longer now I want you to kinda of pay attention um, you'll notice right here in the back um, by this car when we played back um, there's just something you want to be careful about and it just has to do with you know motion tracking parts of the image what the heck was that I'm just kidding <laughs> that's a horrible idea anyway um, we better just move on alright first thing you need to do is interpret your footage so when you're tracking everything has to be perfect so make sure you go interpret and in this case turn everything to 24 frames per second okay do that with your mask um, and your creator footage render from 3d max and any other visual elements such as the smoke here set that to 24 and choose okay Okay, so here's the file we exported out of Buju. This is the Maya camera script file, and we'll drop that into our project. And it goes and creates two comps, this comp and the square crater scene. Well, we're actually just going to delete this comp, and uh, we'll delete that, and we'll double click on the square crater scene. Now, go into the comp settings. Now, it gets a bit tricky, but it's really not that tricky. Remember, our footage is 1280 by 720. So I'm going to change it 1280 by 720. And then I'll take our footage and drop it into the project. Now the problem that comes up has to do with pixel aspect ratios. And we're currently working in a square pixel aspect ratio. So you just have to make sure that whatever you do is consistent all the way through. So if you're going to work in square pixels, make sure that you export for Buju and you set the project up and everything stays in that format. Now, in this case, you'll notice that these track points don't line up with this point where it was in Buju. So, it almost seems like the track points aren't aligned with our footage. And it's true. And the reason why is this project is set up for a pixel aspect ratio of 0.9. Now, in After Effects 6.5, you didn't have this problem, but to solve it, we're going to go into the camera, hit AA, just toggle down the camera settings, and there's a zoom. And what we're going to do is, in this case, the zoom stays the same the entire time. And what we're going to do is Alt-click on it, and we're going to add an expression. And we're going to do multiply, so do a star times 1.111. And what this is doing is counterbalancing the pixel aspect ratio by sort of zooming it in a little bit. And so now you can see the points line up and everything should work fine. So next thing we'll do is go and take our render of our crater and drop that right on top and make sure that the size of it fits correctly. I think uh, we may have rendered out a higher res version, but this particular version is exactly 720p. And uh, it looks pretty good, and you'll notice that everything lines up perfectly. And that's because all of our frame rates are correct. 
everything's going good. So already you can see, uh, you know, things are, are coming along. Now we want to add some two-dimensional elements such as a texture, maybe some smoke, maybe a couple of aliens, uh, you know, whatever you like. Um, now if you happen to be an alien watching this, maybe you want to create some humans coming out of the hole, um, you know, just to change it up. So whichever way you prefer. Um, we have this grunge map, which is just sort of this picture um, done up in Photoshop with some different textures and stuff. And we're going to add that onto the floor plane. Now, the camera in our scene is representative of the camera that was actually used on the day for filming this scene. So when we put objects in the scene, they should line up correctly. So we'll go ahead and bring that out. And uh, there it is. We'll go ahead and change, hit F4 and I'll change the transfer mode to multiply and that gets rid of the white and we'll also make it a 3D layer and it's in the scene at this point but it's not quite where we want it the key to matching points is copying the position data from these known points so remember these null objects actually represent real 3D points in our scene so this one is right about there so we'll hit P and we'll select it and we'll choose edit copy and then we'll click on the grunge map hit P select the position hit edit paste so now the grunge map although large is right in the middle where that point is so we'll hit S and we'll scale it down and we'll hit the rotate key and we'll just rotate it flat here and you hold down shift and it will snap so we're gonna put it below the crater and so you can see if I move it around here, it is right underneath the crater. And we can then scale it back up and, you know, maybe lower the opacity. Just kind of blend it in with our scene. Whoops. And just make sure you adjust it only on the Y and X axis because if you move it off the plane, it will sort of look like it's floating. And you want to make sure that it looks like it's stuck on the floor. Uh, we can also duplicate this, control D, and move this copy down in the distance and, you know, scale it down or whatever, um, just to kind of get a little bit more grunge in your scene. So that's uh, up to you, but that's a good way to uh, get that to work. Now, the other thing I want to do is add some smoke in our scene. So I actually filmed uh, some smoke uh, just pretty quickly just uh, for this tutorial and uh, we're gonna go ahead and use it as an element in the hole and around the hole so what we need is a mask around the edge of the hole so that the smoke will look like it's inside of the hole so what I did in 3d max is I went ahead and disabled all the layers and just put a solid gray layer onto uh, the main part of the floor and what that allows us to do is you know extract this and use it as an alpha mat so to do that in max by the way just you know you can right click on the hole that we created and choose object properties and then just shut off renderable or turn the visibility down to zero and that way when you render it out it will exclude those parts and you can then uh, you know use it as a compositing tool so we'll go ahead and take the mask bring it out and we need to edit it so that it fits correctly. First of all, it's rendered at a higher resolution. So I'll go ahead and fit to comp. And then what you can do is, uh, let's see, we'll solo these layers. And you can see that they uh, are in sync. And what we need to do is sort of get rid of the backside of this mask so that our smoke can come out of the hole and be obscured by the front, but not the back. So an easy way to do that might be to duplicate our grunge map since this grunge map is actually right on the floor surface so I'll just go ahead take this first one duplicate it put it above the mask turn it on and we'll just uh, turn it back to normal here and we can fill it with a color so we can just see it a little better and what I'm gonna do is just take the pen tool and uh, we'll just click across the mid area and uh, we'll change, let's see, we'll just extend that out a bit. We'll hit M and I'll change this to subtract. 
So now we just have the red area. And because it's all 3D, that line is going to stay consistent through the animation. Then we take our mask and we change it to, say, alpha uh, and turn the opacity up to 100. And so now we have a mask that obscures the backside and just keeps this front area. Now, I do want to pre-compose these two elements, but this grunge map is only working because we have a camera in our scene. So we'll duplicate the camera, move it up here, and we'll grab all three of these objects, choose layer pre-compose, and we'll call this mask. And that way, there's a camera in this scene that will make this work proper. And so we have our mask, and we'll go ahead turn everything else back on and so now we can take our smoke and bring it out into the comp we'll go ahead make it a 3d layer and uh, here it is way over here we'll again take the position of the actual null copy it and paste it into the position of the smoke but actually one thing you want to do first is take the pan behind tool and move the anchor point to the bottom of the smoke. Then turn it into a 3D layer. Then hit P, select the position, and paste that keyframe. So now our smoke is right in the middle, and we'll scale it down. We'll change the transfer mode to screen as well. And we can take the rotation tool and rotate it towards the camera. So here's our mask. We'll put our mask above the smoke and we'll take our smoke and move it down into the hole so here's the problem is it's in the hole but we can see it in front of the hole so we have our mask here and we're going to use it to obscure that area so we'll shut it off we'll change the track mat to alpha inverted and so now if we look closely we're cutting that area out and the smoke now looks like it's inside of that hole a little bit better you can also brighten the smoke up with a curves adjustment um, you know and offset it. it is a rather long clip so you can offset it play with the scale you know even duplicate it um, make sure to duplicate the mask as well so hold down shift edit duplicate and you know move this smoke uh, over here to the front perhaps scale it down so you don't want anything to be exactly the same and offset the time so it looks like a unique smoke and maybe for this smoke element we could add a little bit of coloring in the red and the blue channel here not a uh, bad idea it looks like it's getting cut off a little bit there so we'll move it over and again scale it down maybe move this one over and back a bit so we'll go ahead and do a quick preview um, I like to preview at half res and skip one frame and I'll hit zero so here's what that looks like right now and uh, so this is where you can be creative and you know do some different stuff that's really what's great about uh, being able to composite in After Effects is you get some fast response time and you can see what things are going to look like. Um, one other thing you can do is add some uh, sparks coming out of the hole here and the way you would do that it was tie the position of the particle source to one of the null objects and then it would be emitting from that source area. And of course if you visit videocopilot.net there are I think five, uh, 500 tutorials on sparks or some sort of particles so you should be able to uh, find everything you need to know about that and uh, who's to say though I mean I'm sure there'll be plenty more particle tutorials coming out I'll just call it something else and just you know change the color of the particles and it'll be like a brand new tutorial now if you want to see good tutorials be sure to check out our products page uh, we got some great tools up there the bullet evolution most of our products come with several great video tutorials to show you how to use it and uh, get going with it quickly we got great prices and uh, you know tools that will make your work awesome so check it out and of course uh, be sure to check out our tutorials we have our After Effects basic training for anyone who's just getting into After Effects uh, I highly recommend it 
And don't forget to join our blog and our forum. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We uh, got a lot of great members, and uh, I even subscribed. So there you have it. Anyway, my name is Andrew Kramer, and thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see you next time.